Hey, Facebook Live, CammieBaker.com. We are in the happiness jungle, and we are getting ready to shoot the TV show. And we have Miss Deanna with us today, and as soon as the TV show starts, you'll know it. But right now, we are just giving you guys a couple of seconds to share, 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 and let other people know that there's a TV show being aired on Facebook Live right now. How cool is that? So just stay toned, stay toned. See, it's live. It's we live. don't even have to edit. <laughs> um, stay tuned for about 30 seconds and we're gonna start the show. <laughs> They're watching Cammy. Cammy's crazy. <laughs> Fabulous, fierce, and on fire. You have to entertain yourself. Absolutely. Okay. Good day, everybody. CammieBaker.com here, and we are in the happiness jungle, and I have a new special guest with me today, Miss Deanna, and I just want you to know that when you get out and you are networking and meeting people and being fabulous, fierce, and on fire, if I do say so myself, you get the opportunity to make, meet some fun, fabulous new friends. So, on the happiness jungle today, we have Miss Deanna Cole. Miss Deanna. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Yes, yeah, a Deanna Coyle. 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 And it's so wonderful to be on the Happiness Jungle with you today, Cami. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. You are welcome. So we were at an event last yeah. week and right. made eye contact. Right. And you said, I know you. You just did a video on Facebook. I'm going to watch that later on. So we had a little bit of interaction. Right. Come to find out. You are a blessing and an angel to so many people that are going through a desperate situation, and we're going to use that as a cliffhanger for just a moment. <laughs> I want to back up a little bit before we talk about exactly what you do, and just learn a little bit more about yourself. Like, sure. like what, what, you know, what happened in your journey that led you up to creating this business and this powerhouse that you have? Yes. So I have. Uh, I'm the founder of Vesta Redefining Divorce, mm. and it was my own journey of going through divorce that led me to the place where I am now. And it has caused me to see that we all have challenges in life. And we can take those challenging times and turn them into opportunities for personal growth and to create the life that we want when we have the right resources and a supportive community around us. Well, isn't it true? Anything that happens in our life can make us better or it can make us bitter, bitter absolutely. and divorce can definitely make a lot of people bitter, but your right. passion seems to be to go in the other direction. So let's talk about that. Like, you know, you went through a bad situation and, and so now you are actually a, is it, would you consider a life coach, a, a divorce coach? Talk to no, me about so that. So I actually don't provide any services myself. What I used to be, I'd been in finance all my life. I have, was, so the last, career that I had was actually as a financial advisor and doing that I founded these divorce programs and realized that that's really where my passion was it wasn't in finance it was in empowering and connecting people and networking and planning events so two and a half years ago I ended up leaving my financial planning business and starting Vesta so now I work from home and I do exactly what I love and it's really empowering to be able to do that. So where did the name Vesta come from? Vesta, a friend of mine is a, a naming coach or she, she has a branding business and Vesta means helping someone find their full potential or helping to bring their true essence into being. Mm. And that is what I did on my journey through and after divorce. And that is what we empower people to do for themselves, to take that challenging time, but to use it for an opportunity to find their true person and to live their best life. So talk to me about what that looks like. You know, you, you meet somebody that's going through divorce, getting ready to go through divorce. What kind of journey do you take them on? So we meet people who are considering divorce, who are actually going through it, and who are many years post-divorce. Mm -hmm. And people can use the services and, and the social and the educational events and retreats that we provide and the resources that we connect them with at any part of their journey because we have people in our network who help them through the legal legalities, through financial, 
through the emotional. So we ha do have life coaches in our network and therapists. We also have parent coaches and self-care. The whole health and wellness is so important and real estate and even uh, fashion, fashion image, um, anything really, relationships, anything that somebody could use support in on their journey. Well, I know that I have met people over the years that they looked one way when they were married and they let themselves go a little bit. <laughs> and then you see them three or six months after divorce and all of a sudden it's pa pow. It's like, whoa, <laughs> that person got a new hairstyle and everything. And, yeah. and so having a stylist on board is definitely very helpful and really quite needed because Absolutely. it's time to totally transform. Right. You know, let's from break the that inside and out. From the inside out. Right. Yeah. Now, have you always been an entrepreneur, a business owner? I have not. I had worked at corporations. I had worked. Well, at, even as a financial advisor, that's a bit of an entrepreneur. That is. That was really after I went through divorce, I started doing that. Before I went through divorce, I was a research analyst, a uh, securities analyst, and I gave that up to be a stay at home mom. Mm. So I had o always worked in a desk job and at a corporation. And after going through divorce, I started building my own business as a financial advisor, but that was still a desk type job. Mm -hmm. So I love being able to do what I do now from home, being there when my kids get home and really being able to plan my day and, and work when it best suits me and my schedule. Well, this is a really creative business that you're in. It took a lot of chutzpah. Yes. A lot of definitely. gumption, uh, you know, <laughs> a set of something or other <laughs> right. to, to, uh, to do that. And so, I, you know, because it's the happiness jungle, we want to inspire. We want to share stories that uplift yes. and show right. other people that they can do it, too, and give ideas about, you know, what is it that, that keeps you going. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you went through such a, a dark time and then yeah. came out on the other side and said, hey, I'm going to make a business out of like I, I can't even imagine. Like I've always been an entrepreneur. I was eight years old and selling gum to other kids for a profit. Wow. So so I've always Not surprised <laughs> knowing you. <laughs> so I've always been in that place of how do you monetize that? Why don't they sell that? Why don't they add that? I I, I got that. Yeah. But to go through something so dark and then say, hey, I'm going to make a business out of that. That's just that's cray cray. Like. What keeps you going on a daily basis, especially since you meet people that are in such a dark place? So you gotta, right. you gotta really keep your own mindset really juiced up so that you can not get pulled into a negative energy, but actually pull them into your positive Absolutely. energy. Absolutely, yeah, that's really perceptive because you would think that with what, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, it, would, it would, could be somewhat depressing, but I'm actually, I actually have never been happier. Because when you have people that you're helping say to you, and these are some things that people have actually said to me, this is the first time in two years that I've smiled. This is mm, the first time I've had hope. Goosebumps. This is the first time I feel as if I'm not isolated and I have, I have a community of friends. This is the first time I feel as if I'm talking to someone who understands exactly what I'm going to and I finally feel as if I'm not alone. Mm that there's nothing but positivity about that to be able to take someone from that darker place and to be able to provide them with the hope and support and have them build a new life for themselves i used to when i was working in finance on wall street making really great money holding a lot of power i actually didn't enjoy waking up in the morning mm. and i had to get in super early and now I could sleep till whenever, but I don't. I actually bound out of bed. I finally have realized that I used to think I wasn't a morning person. And now I realize I only thought that I wasn't a morning person. You can become whatever person you want to mm -hmm. be. And when you love what you do, you can't wait to get up and start your day. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what does your day look like? It's whatever I want it to look like, but it's so this morning, for example, I, I woke up early and one of my sons took the bus to school and today was the last day of school, which is Yay! hard to believe. And the other son I drove to school and then on the way back from school, I, I made some phone calls talking to people who are going through divorce who needed support. I get home and I post on social media. There's a lot of social media involved with what I do and follow up on events that we've already had, plan events that we have coming up, obviously posted about being here with the fabulous you, <laughs> and, and then picked my kids up from school, 
um, we got takeout for lunch and, and came here. And I'm going to go home and do some more work, call more people who I know you could use some support and work in telling more people about our events and the retreats that we have. See, I love just sharing with our viewers a little bit about the fact that you are making your own way. You're setting your own schedule. You've got quality time with the kids in the morning. How many right. parents out there it's would awesome. love to just have the opportunity to take their children to school or to pick them up and have some takeout? You know, right. being an entrepreneur is just... It is. It's wonderful. Yummy. Yummy. Right? It's great. I couldn't imagine going back to a desk job. But. Now, I have to ask from an entrepreneurial monetization perspective, you get on the phone with people, you're giving them support. How do you transition from, listen, I really want to support you. I can see that you really need some support. This is my business. We need to get into a client relationship. So right now where I am is we, we have a plan in place where Vesta is going to be making money, and that's going to be coming together soon. We have a lot of things in the works. For right now, there are people who talk with me, and they're like, wow, you've helped me so much. What can I do? I can't believe I'm not, not going to be paying you for this. I say, the way you pay me is by coming to our events and also helping to get the word out. We have people come to our events who have heard about Vesta from someone who's heard about Vesta, and that's the biggest payback for me. So, as you know, when you have a business, it's been two and a half years, you know, as a startup, you actually a lot of times spend more money and time investing in the business, but it will pay off. Are I'm you sure wanting to speak? I love speaking. I've actually done uh, some presentations. The last one was at the Natural Living Expo. It was actually just last November. and. It was on turning life's challenges into opportunities for personal growth, and it was incredibly rewarding. And I go to Toastmasters, I've been working on public speaking. It used to be something that totally petrified me, and I actually would make excuses to get out of it. <laughs> and now I'm out there finding any opportunity that I can to be in front of the camera like this and to also be in front of people speaking live. Well, so for me, when I'm working with my clients on having a business networking strategy, yeah. Speaking is just the best marketing ever. Absolutely. To yeah. get on a stage and be, you know, I would, I would say, you know, get in front of uh, attorneys and mitigator, mitigate, me mediators, mediators, mediators. I had a client who's a mediator, and I yeah. kept, I kept saying <laughs> mitigator because I was in real estate, and in real estate, you mitigate. You mitigate. But, <laughs> well, but, yeah, but, and you don't want to litigate. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it was mitigate. Mediate. Mediate, don't litigate. Mediate, yes, don't litigate. Mediate, don't litigate. But either that. way, for you, mediate or litigate, now they need you, or even before all, or they going need, through all of that. They need the professionals that, that my leadership team and I have personally vetted to be part of Vesta. So other than some social media and what I would work with you on, which would be getting you on stages with all of these um, yeah. different groups that are, are in the midst of, of divorce folks, right. um, how do you let people know about what you're doing? And let's talk a little bit about what your events look like. Not, not specific ones, because this TV show will last forever, but, but just right. the idea of what, what kind of events you do, what kind of programs you do. We have so many different types of events, and some are purely educational, some are purely social, and some are a wonderful combination of the two. Mm. We have workshops that focus on specific areas, and it could be legal or financial or relationships or real estate, or it could be a combined topic. So we have some that are pretty specific. It could be you know, challenging custody issues that people face. We also have events that ha have a, a mixture of presenters that could cover the key legal areas so legal, financial, real estate, and emotional issues and coping strategies around mm -hmm. divorce. And our main programs, which we absolutely love and people get the most benefit from, are our retreats. We have two-day retreats. And this upcoming weekend, no one is supposed to talk about specific events, but we will always be doing our retreats. We're, we're going to be doing our 15th retreat. Well, they can go straight to your amazing. website, and they, they can, can see about the one coming up this weekend. They can, absolutely, and there will be, whenever this airs, there will be another retreat that will be coming up.
For sure. And, you know, retreats are so important because even as a, whether as a business person or just as um, anyone who wants to be with like-minded people. So with, for me, I want to be right. with visionary people that are goal setting and, and thought leaders. And in this case, people who are going through the same situation. You know, right. we are animals. We are social animals. Yeah. And it seems like social media has made us the most antisocial, you know. And so having these events, people want an experience. They want to have, talk to me about some of the experiences they have at the, at the retreats that you do. Oh, our retreats are amazing. And we have people, when they come, they say how they're feeling. We actually put um, the large, you know, sticky papers up on the wall and have them write how they're feeling, what they think about divorce, what they're looking to get out of the weekend. Mm. And our, most of our retreats are literally, they start, you know, on Saturday morning and they end early afternoon on Sunday. And in that short period of time, people are totally transformed. At the end, they're writing on the walls and then we also have a closing circle and they're saying, I feel, at the end, I feel empowered, I feel happy, I have hope, I've made new friendships, I feel knowledgeable and validated. It's really incredible, the transformation. And we also see the physical transformation. In the beginning, they might have slumped shoulders, be looking down. At the end, they're standing tall, they're smiling, and they don't know exactly how they're going to get to the other side, but they know that they're going to get there and that their relationship with Vesta is not ending at the end of the retreat, that it's going to continue. Isn't that interesting, the physical change? It's amazing. About four years ago, I had put on 25 pounds, and I've always been this size, but I was 47, 46, 47, and all of a sudden I realized my pants weren't fitting, and so yeah. long story short, I go to this trainer, and we have the before picture, mm -hmm. and imagine me with a nice little roll going on. I've got on a shirt that says, girls just want to have fun, which is, so, which is what's so great about this photo. Girls just want to, and I'm literally like, because I'm just, I'm, I'm overweight. I'm six o'clock in the morning, I'm at the gym. I am not a happy camper. Then about a year later, yeah. you know, like 10% body fat less, lost yeah. the 25 back to papal, who am I supposed to be? And so when I look at those pictures side by side, I've actually used it at a networking event, put it up. Mm -hmm. After everybody laughs, we get a good laugh until we cry. <laughs> I say, now look at these two people. Who do you really want to associate with? Who are you attracted to, not physically, but emotionally, spiritually? Right. And so it would be awesome, actually, for you to even take photos of people when they first get there. Not that you're going to use for promotion, because this is a very personal thing. Absolutely. But for yeah, them. But, but, for but for them. them to see the before and after. Yeah, that's really great. Because we do a group photo at the end, and we do one with everyone, and that's just private. And then we do one for social media with only the people opting in who sure. who are okay with that. But to take photos of them before and after for themselves, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, so that they can really see, wow, yeah. there's a difference in me. Really Even I can, I can imagine you having 10, 15, 20 people doing a group photo in the beginning when they're all kind of like staunch and like not really touching and kind of, you know, yeah, wherever the they end, And then, hey, arms around each other, goodbye, smiling. Yeah, my Lord. <laughs> We had a retreat earlier this year, and we had 11 incredible participants. And they form their own private Facebook group, and they get together. We all get together. Nice. And it's been, yeah, it's been amazing. So do you have a continued support group like that, like one for anybody that can join from your group that's, that wants to continue with that support? We ask people who would like to stay in touch with everyone and provide their email address. And we also will be soon forming a private Facebook group for all attendees to be able to be part of. Yeah, because the ongoing support is so important. Once again, we're right. social animals, you yeah. know, and it is so easy to feel so isolated. Absolutely. Speaking of which, you being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, I, I think of it, we're on our entrepreneurship we're sailing our entrepreneurship and it can be so lonely. So I'd love for you to share with the viewers a little bit about like, what does it look like if there's somebody watching who's like, you know what, I just went through something that wasn't the best thing in the world, but I came out on the other side, I came out of Phoenix. I'd like to create a business out of that. 
Like, what did that look like for you to, to create something out of nothing? For me, it just happened. But did you I, sit down was, and write out a plan? Like, it, it was more that as I was looking to build my financial planning business after having gone through divorce and realizing I, I couldn't go back to the type of work I used to do, how was I going to build my financial planning business? And it, how it looked was to provide programs that would educate people who are also, who are going through divorce and then you have that community that, that they would meet me and they would know that I'd been there and they would feel the affinity. You, when you're looking to build a business, you want people to be able to see this is, that's what I can have. And I feel a connection with this person because they know what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've uh, enrolled so many people in your vision because you have your whole team. Yeah. And where I met you the other night, you had a table up. Yeah. You know, you've got your collateral, as we call it, the marketing material. Right. Your your business partner was there with you. So, what are do you do a lot of uh, booths and things like that to get the word out? We do a fair amount. The most successful that we found was at the Natural Living Expo, which is uh, where I gave my presentation last year. We last year was our second year having a booth there. And there's 10,000 people that come through that each year. It's, a, it's the largest holistic fair in New England. Mm. And we're going to be having that same table every year from now on. We're also we're part of the Metro West Women's Network, and we're, we're sponsoring this September. We do have tables at certain things. This, this just seemed like an awesome opportunity, and I'm also really close with Lisa Momgrim, who was really integral in planning the event where I met you last week, mm -hmm. and she asked me if I wanted to have a table. So I, I thought, why not? You know, why not have an opportunity to meet fabulous people? And yeah. I'm so happy that I did because I met you. That's so true. And aren't you doing a little something, something with maybe doing some singles activity so that now that all these beautiful people are are coming out the other side of the fire, and now they're like, you know what? That was a chapter of my life. That chapter's closed. I'm ready for another chapter. Aren't you helping them to do that as well? We have an amazing life and relationship coach in our group, Susan Trotter, and she has at least one event a month that is on dating and relationships and, and online dating, if that's something that people are interested in doing and how to do it the right way. We also have a lot of social events. There's an attorney and mediator in our group, David Kellum, who is an incredible mediator and attorney and a, an incredible person and he also was in a band and we've had three social events this year where we go and uh, dance to the band and have an amazing time we have at least 25 30 people that come and dance so so we have so a lot of social events so we're doing a little name dropping now david Cullum. david kellum kellum and susan trotter i actually heard her name oh about a month ago because i've been doing was doing trying very difficultly to put it down, online dating. Because oh, every, everything, okay. anything in moderation is good. Obsessiveness is not a good thing, <laughs> right, especially when you're right. not an addict and alcoholic like I am in recovery. Um, but uh, somebody, I had made a mention on Facebook about uh, something about online dating, and somebody oh. said, you need to talk to Susan Trotter. She can help you with that. Oh, wow. you know? so, yeah, absolutely. So her name is getting out. And we're dropping it again so that she'll share your TV show. Oh, she absolutely absolutely will. She and I were just talking and texting right, right beforehand. We are in contact uh, many times a day. She's actually on the leadership team of Vesta. So you've got a leadership team. You, you've got a whole uh, resources uh set of, of professionals, just all right. kinds. So what's next for Vesta? So we started off in the greater Boston area and we expanded down to Rhode Island beginning last fall and in April we expanded up to the North Shore. So what's next is to continue expanding. We are going to be going national and continuing to find really wonderful professionals who are not only are really good at what they do, but also have the compassion and the heart, and you can tell when you talk to people. Mm. And who also, almost all of the professionals have a personal experience with divorce, which makes them really passionate about what they do. So that's next, continuing to expand, and we have a lot of things in the works. Isn't it beautiful that something happened that at the time was a breakdown for you? Right. 
and then turned into a breakthrough. And because of your vision, something so wonderful is growing. It is wonderful. That is one of the reasons why I wake up happy every day. And not to say that life is without challenges. I think when you're up to big things, there's always going to be challenges. And breakthroughs are what give you the opportunity, or actually breakdowns. Breakdowns are what give you the opportunities for the breakthroughs. Because when you're up to big things, you're going to have things in, that happen. And you're just going to say, okay, well, it didn't work that way. What is it that I need to put in, or who do I need to call to find out what the breakthrough is? Because I... In the past, I used to have something bad happen, and I would think, wow, this is just horrible. This is it. Now I realize this is just temporary. There's going to be a lesson that I'm going to be able to learn from this, and I can't wait to find out what it is. Right. Lindy Eldridge, the uh, original chief happiness officer of the <laughs> Happiness Jungle and I, we did a yeah. show two or three months ago about if you're not failing, shame on you. Because if you're not failing, you're, you're not, not trying. trying. You're, not, you're not going out of your comfort zone. You're never going to accomplish anything by just smooth sailing through life. And the good news is it's all seasons. And even if you're in a winter, the thing is it's a season. It's not permanent. Right. It's not it's forever. Not I just saw this on a video yesterday. I'm stealing it from Tony Robbins. But the <laughs> oh, thing I is, the thing is, is that it was because uh, Oprah was with him. And she said, you know, what I really got out of that was that, you know, I've heard it said that life is seasons and you meet people for a reason or a season and you're going yeah. through a season. She said, but what I really got out of it, what I heard was um, the good news is when you think of this as a season, no matter how dark or, or, or bad it may seem. Right. When you think of it as a season, you know that it's not going to last forever because seasons right, don't last forever. Right. No they matter don't. how cold it gets here, no matter how cold, no. the flowers do come up. They're going to. They have to. And it's the same right. thing in our life, too. And in Absolutely. this case, the winter that happened for you blossomed in to a beautiful springtime for all the people that you meet. That was good. That was good. Yeah. So what are just the last couple of words for me? We've got sure. about one minute left okay. that you'd like to share to inspire anyone that you are here to serve? So I would like to give anyone the opportunity to first go to our website, VestaDivorce.com, and to also reach out. If you go to the website, there's the phone number and the email address, and when you call that number, I'm the one who answers. Mm -hmm. People can reach out to me anytime, and there is always hope, there's always support. And sometimes it's just taking action. You may not feel like it in the moment, but once you make that first small step, then you'll find the next step, and then you'll find the next. And then you will have hope, and you'll feel empowered, and you'll be on your journey to having a better life for yourself and for everyone that you love. It all takes taking that first step, no matter it what it is in life. It's right. a matter of taking that first step. So instead of sitting on the couch, feeling sorry for ourselves, let's right. pick up the phone and call Deanna if we're in divorce. Happiness Jungle. See you guys next time.